Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a comparison of some of my mid-size luxury bags. I don't really have a better term than mid-size unfortunately because some of these are slightly different styles. So some of them are crossbody, some of them are shoulder bags, but they're all in that kind of medium size range. So I have five styles here that I'm going to be comparing. I have my Chanel 19 bag, my Chanel Jumbo, my Saint Laurent Small Classic Lulu, my Saint Laurent Puffer in the small size, as well as my Balance. Tina Roman stud bag. So I hope you guys enjoy this and find it useful and let's get started. So first up is my Valentino Roman stud bag. I'm not going in any particular order here, so don't read anything into the order. It is just random. I've had this one in my collection since the beginning of the year, and I've really, really been enjoying it. I love the overall look. I think it's so different looking, and I love the combination of quite a classic shape with the more edgy, more fashiony studs and detailing. Like, I just think it's such a stunning combination. That said, I do very much think that this bag is definitely in the love it or hate it camp. I think that it's one of those when if you see it, you know, you'll be like, oh, I love it or otherwise like definitely not for me. I'm obviously in the love it camp and I do think it's a very, very beautiful design. I also think it just feels like very nice quality. You know, it's one of those bags which when you pick up, it feels like a very luxurious bag. The leather is beautiful. The hardware is very substantial and it's just really beautifully designed designed. Um, that said, it isn't particularly light because of the hardware. The hardware does have a fair amount of weight to it and it's also fully lined in leather as well which does also add to the weight. Definitely not like super crazy heavy but certainly not a very very kind of light as air bag. You do have a turn lock closure right there which is my favorite kind of closure. I'm just used to them because of the Chanel flaps and I find them so easy and practical. I just love them. And then you open it up and on the inside it's just a wide open space. There is no compartment in the middle so you actually can fit a fair amount in here. And as I mentioned, you do have that leather lining. On the base there aren't any feet at all and it is a bit more of a soft base so that is something to keep in mind. And then on the back you don't have any pocket, you do just have that great stud design. What I really love about this is the jewel where you can wear it. I wouldn't really wear this crossbody but I've certainly worn it just as a shoulder bag with the doubled up chains. But I also think it's really great just as a top handle. And this is coming from someone who doesn't really like top handles at all, like I would never choose to wear my bags like that usually, but I love it with this bag. I just think it looks so beautiful. It's a very comfortable strap as well because it's so thick. And because of that, I just think it's that little bit more versatile. I feel like it is a very statement making bag, but I am more than happy to wear this, you know, on a day out. Obviously not to the grocery store, but I'm happy to wear it, you know, shopping, out to lunch, but I'm equally happy to wear it as a dinner bag as well because you do have all of those dressy elements. So I love the fact you can wear it multiple ways and I do just think it's such a beautiful style. Next up is my Chanel Jumbo and I'm not gonna go over this one too much because heaven knows I've spoken about it enough on this channel. I just love this bag. It's been my favorite bag for the past 10 years and I would be very, very surprised if it wasn't my favorite bag for the next 10 years as well. It's just wonderful. This is the second to largest size in the Chanel Classic Flap lineup. So it is a fairly roomy bag. Um, it's very, very structured indeed, um, even more so if you get it in the grained caviar leather, which is what I have and this one has the double flap which does help maintain that beautiful kind of round curve on the flap and then you have the very small zip pocket right there on the top and then on the inside you have the wide open space two pockets on the back and then the pocket on the front as well as the pocket on the back as well there are no feet but it is a very very rigid base so you don't have to worry about sagging or anything like that it is a reinforced one and because of that these hold their shape incredibly well and they're just very very durable again especially if you get them in the grained leather i only wear mine with the double chains and it does sit fairly low but i love that um i do wear this for a variety of different kind of occasions I'm happy to go out with it at night but if it was a very fancy dinner like I wouldn't choose to wear this just because it is more on the large side like I'm happy to wear it for a date night I actually wore this exact bag the other night to go to the movies with Dan and fit some dinner and you know that certainly wasn't anything fancy and I was more than happy to wear it for that but I'd say that if you know it was a fancier dinner and I was wearing like a full-on dress with heels I probably wouldn't go for this just because again 
feels a little bit large and because of the size it does make it feel like it's a bit more suitable for daytime wear or otherwise a slightly more casual looking outfit. Don't get me wrong, you still absolutely wear this dressed up and I think the classic flap is more of a formal style, but for me this wouldn't really be my go-to choice for a fancy dinner. Next up is my Saint Laurent Lulu puffer and this one is in the small size. I do have comparison of all the different sizes so I will link that if you are interested in it but I adore this entire line and there's not too much in it in terms of the different sizes for me um, but I would say that this is probably currently my favourite just because I do find it to be the most versatile. It is quite a simple bag and um, there are no pockets on the back, there are no kind of extra flaps or anything like that. It is literally like you open up, you have one pocket on the back and that is it. It's a fabric lining but you do have leather all the way around but it is fully leather everywhere else and it is very very lightweight indeed. Even though the hardware does feel very nice quality you also have the leather strap as well. It's an incredibly light bag and is very very comfortable to wear because of that and it just kind of feels like you're wearing nothing. So not only is this I think a very very elegant choice especially in this small size which I do think is a little bit more versatile than the other sizes in the line but it's also also a very very comfortable one and I think that comfort when it comes to bags is sometimes just not as valued as it should be you know often we go for like the statement of making one or the colors we like but for me like comfortable bags are often the ones that I reach for most because there's just nothing more luxurious than something that just doesn't even feel like you're wearing it and you're just free to go about your day you know so I love this bag I think it's really really beautiful the leather is wonderfully soft and luxurious it's really a stunning bag and also the wear and tear has been fantastic as well. I will go over that a little bit more later but these really are very durable bags. But they still 100% look the part as well and for me because of this size I would be very happy to wear this during the day as I would in the evening too. Next up is the classic version of the Saint Laurent Lulu. So the other one was the puffer one, this is the classic one. This one comes with the strap and you can wear this doubled up or you can wear it just as a single chain. I mostly tend to wear it like this. Um, I just think it works really well and it's just my favorite way to wear it. And much like the puffer, it is fairly simple but you just have a little bit more organization in this one. So you do have the compartment in the middle. That'll be a love it or hate it thing and the compartment in the middle does limit the capacity but it does offer you more organization. For me I find it plenty roomy enough even though it doesn't look like a massive bag you can actually fit a decent amount inside so I'm happy with the layout and the capacity and because it's that really nice kind of in-between size I do think that this is incredibly versatile in terms of day to evening you know big enough to carry all of your essentials and be a very functional day bag but at the same time it's small enough that I don't think it would look out of place even at a very fancy dinner so I do like the versatility with that no pocket on the back no feet on the bottom but these have held up pretty well for me and I do have a few of them my oldest one is the white one which I have used a ton and it's still looking in pretty good condition so I love them I think this is probably the most classic again I will touch upon that more later but for me this is just a really really beautiful elegant classic style and then finally, I do have my Chanel 19 bag, which is by far the newest one in my collection. But since getting this, I have used it pretty much constantly. It's been in very heavy rotation. It's been my most used bag for sure over the past four to five weeks. I just can't get enough of it. I'm definitely in the honeymoon phase of this bag. I just think it's so beautiful. I'm having so much fun wearing it. Um, this one does have the pocket on the back. It does have a magnetic button on the back. You do have a fabric lining, no feet on the bottom, and you do have that classic Chanel flap right here. And it just opens up like so. I do have my liner inside right here. This one is from Handbag Angels, and I love it because you do have the reinforced sides as well as the base and it has made the world of difference in terms of structuring this bag. So I would definitely recommend getting a bag shaper or just a bag liner, which kind of does the same thing. If you do have one of these styles, you do have the pocket right here at the back. And then apart from that, it's just a very simple fabric lining, but obviously with a bag liner, you do have a few more compartments as well. But that's it. It's a very, very simple bag indeed. Again, I love the turn lock. You do have that top handle and 
I guess it's kind of similar to the Roman stud bag from Valentino, except instead of that double strap option, it is just a longer chain option. So great if you like wearing your bags crossbody. I also just pop this on the shoulder as well. And I pretty much like to wear it all three ways. So for me, I love the versatility of it. I think it's such a beautiful style. For me, this is more of a casual style, but certainly one that I still dress up with, you know, heels, jeans, I'd happily wear this with, you know, a skirt as well. Um, I wouldn't go full on glam with it, but for everything else, which is like what I wear 99.9% .9 of the time, this is great. I've really been loving it. Love the versatility and how easy it is to wear a whole bunch of different ways. And I just think it's gorgeous. I've been loving it so much. Okay, so I wanted to add in another component to this video this time, which is weight. So I'm going to be weighing all of these bags just to give you an idea of the differences on your shoulder. Okay, so the jumbo is first. So here it is at almost 1.2 kilos. So definitely the heaviest by far. I'm um, not quite 1.2, but almost. Next up, I have the Valentino Rome instead, and that's coming in at just under a kilo at 900 grams. Without the liner, it weighs in at a little bit less than 750 grams. The Saint Laurent Lulu is coming in at 700 grams, so quite a bit lighter than both the Jumbo and the Valentino Roman Stud. The Saint Laurent Small Lulu Puffer is coming in just below the regular Lulu at 664 grams. Okay, so the largest bag is first, and that is my Chanel Jumbo. This has a very, very large capacity indeed. I filled it very full, but you can see there is still a lot of space up here at the top, so you could definitely add in more items if you wanted to. So here I have my LV key holder, my wallet that I'm currently using, which is just a little compact one, but I will show you can fit in longer wallets as well. My iPhone, a pack of tissues, my AirPods case, a little brush, a little face mask that flung out, umbrella, hand cream, which is approximately the same size as a hand sanitizer, a little reusable bag, and then also a lipstick as well. So as you can see, it can fit in a very, very decent amount. If you did want to use a long wallet instead, that would fit in just fine and you would still have plenty of room for everything else. Similarly, if it wasn't raining, then you could swap out the umbrella for a bottle of water. And even with the long wallet, there is still plenty of room in there for lots of other belongings. So definitely a very, very roomy bag. Next up is my Saint Laurent Lulu Puffer. And even though this is quite a small looking bag, uh, it can actually fit a ton because you don't have any compartments on the inside. So I have filled it fairly full. Um, so you could definitely go light in this, obviously. Um, I don't think you could fit too much more in because I have really kind of gone to town. So inside I have a face mask. I have some tissues. I have a reusable bag. I have my AirPods, a little hand cream slash sanitizer my key holder from Louis Vuitton, my long wallet, a lipstick, iPhone, and then I also fit in a bottle of water, which is approximately the same size as a small umbrella. So that is everything that can fit inside. Obviously a very, very decent amount as well. I probably wouldn't fill it quite that full um, just because obviously these items weigh quite a bit, but if you wanted to, you can definitely fit all of these items in. Next up is my Valentino Roman stud and very similar to the Chanel Jumbo, it actually has a very decent capacity and this is filled very full, but I don't feel like it looks like it's kind of bulging or anything. So this is a very comfortable fit, even though I have so many items in here. So this is what it looks like. I have inside a mini hairbrush, a face mask. I have some tissues. I have my key holder, my AirPod case, a lipstick, my iPhone, a long wallet, an umbrella, a little hand cream or hand sanitizer, and then also a reusable bag as well. So it can actually fit in a very, very decent amount. You could swap out the umbrella for water. You can definitely swap out the longer wallet for something smaller, obviously. This is the longest wallet I have, and it fits very comfortably, even with an umbrella or even with a bottle of water, if you wanted to fit that inside. So a very decent capacity, even though I don't feel like it has a super oversized look.
Now for the Chanel 19 bag, and this one's definitely a little bit smaller than the others, which are all pretty comparable in terms of capacity. Um, it can still fit a decent amount in, um, but as you can see, I did switch out some items here. So I filled it fairly full, and inside I have a pack of tissues, I have a face mask, I have a mini hairbrush, an AirPods case, a lipstick, and the wallet I went for is the Chloe one that I'm using at the moment. You can fit in a longer wallet, and I will show you that in a second, but it does limit what else you can fit inside. So I have my hand cream, key holder, and then my phone. I do have my liner in here, and this is my long wallet. And as you see, you can fit it in, but you don't have a ton of room for everything else. So that's why I went for my more compact wallet. You could make it work, um, but I just prefer to go smaller and then be able to fit more items in. You could, again, technically fit in a small umbrella, but again, you're just limiting the capacity for other items there. And next up, I have my Saint Laurent Lulu in the small, and I have filled this very full, but there's no bulging, as you can see. And this one is actually a little bit surprising. I rarely fill it completely full, so even I was surprised by how much can fit inside, but I actually got in a lot. It's been a while since I've done a what's in my bag with this size, but as you can see, I filled it full, but you'll see I did manage to pack in a lot. So I have my little hand cream, I have my Louis Vuitton key holder, a face mask, some tissues, a lipstick, my phone, my AirPod case, and then I actually managed to fit in both the umbrella and the long wallet. And you do have to be careful with how you put it in. You do kind of have to maneuver, but you can definitely get that in there because it is still quite wide. So I was able to fit in both the long wallet. And I was also able to fit in my umbrella as well. And it wasn't a super relaxed fit. I definitely had to kind of maneuver it in there, but in a bind, you could definitely do that. And obviously there'd be much more capacity if you went for a smaller wallet, for example. So in a bind, you could fit in all of these items in. And obviously, if you have small items, you would have plenty of room as well. Okay, so first up is my Chanel Jumbo. Most of you will know how this looks like on me. It is a very substantial size, um, and it definitely is that oversized look, but I personally love it. I think it's so great, and I just can't really get enough. This is probably my nearest comparison with the Valentino Roman stud. The other ones are quite a bit smaller, um, but I'd say this is my closest one. So as you can see, even though the Roman stud is a very substantial size, the jumbo still does look a little bit bigger and especially with the drop as well, that does contribute as well. And this is just the Roman stud by itself. This is probably my favorite way to wear it, but as I mentioned, the great thing about this bag is I do think it just looks equally great to just kind of handheld with the top handle as well. But it's definitely very comfortable as a shoulder bag if that's how you wanted to wear it. And this is it as the top handle. You can't really wear the Chanel Jumbo too many other ways, um, but this one, you can wear it just kind of in the crook of your arm, just handheld. There are a few different options as well as that original shoulder bag style. And this is the Chanel 19. So this is probably the only one out of all the bags that I would comfortably wear uh, kind of on the shoulder or crossbody. The other ones you could, but they're just more suited to wearing as shoulder bags in my view, um, with maybe the exception of the Lulu Puffer, but this is definitely the most suited towards wearing on the shoulder or crossbody. This is just it comfortably on the shoulder, really comfortable to wear every single way, which is what I love about this bag. And this is it crossbody, uh, just the perfect length, a really, really comfortable fit. I'm happy to wear it every single way, and it is just a really nice bag to use and wear. And this is it just handheld, really nice. I've kind of looped over the uh, longer chain, but obviously you can just have it dangling down if you wanted to. And if you wanted a direct size comparison of the Roman stud and the 19, here it is. There's not too much in it, but obviously the 19 is a little bit smaller. Um, the larger size 19 was pretty substantially bigger, so there would obviously be a difference there, um, but I don't think there's too much in it here. And here is the Saint Laurent Lulu Puffer. You can wear this one all three ways. To be honest, I don't. I mostly wear it on the shoulder, but you definitely can if you want to. And this is it crossbody by itself as well. And here is the 19 and the Lulu Puff together. Actually very, very comparable sizes um, when you kind of look at them like this. Not too much in it at all and both have that similar kind of look for sure. Obviously the biggest difference between the 19 and the Lulu is that you can wear this doubled up whereas you can't with the 19, um, but it does have quite a bit of a longer chain length. 
whereas the Lulu puffer just sits a little bit higher. And as you see, when you wear it like this, I feel like the differences look a lot more stark and they look like very different bags here, whereas crossbody, they look a lot more similar. And this is the Saint Laurent Small Lulu. This is just it on the shoulder, which is how I wear it most of the time. Just a really nice, comfortable fit. And here it is just crossbody. Uh, you can wear it like this, but again, for me, it's just like not a super natural way to wear it. So I always prefer just to wear it on the shoulder. And just to give you an idea of the size difference. So I have here the small one, and then here is the Lula Puffer. And there's not masses in it, you know, it's a very similar look, obviously. They're both in quite similar colors, but I'd say that the Puffer is just a little bit more casual. Wear and tear is up next, and I've kind of got my two pillars at either end, very durable and not quite as durable, and then the three other bags are just lumped in the middle. So most durable Chanel Jumbo won't come as a surprise to anyone. I've documented the wear and tear of my black Jumbo over the last five years. I had it for five years before that, so it's a 10 year old bag, and it still looks very, very good for its age. If you get it in the grained caviar leather, which I would always recommend when going for a bag of this size it will just serve you very well i have literally done everything possible to my black Chanel bag it's been caught in rain it's been bashed about not intentionally ever obviously but these things happen when you have a bag for that long and it still looks fantastic so definitely the most durable and the most carefree next up is the saint laurent puffer line and this is a very very durable line from my experience i've had my black one now for I think it's over two years and it just looks fantastic. Like the leather, even though it is incredibly soft, it is very durable. And that's because it really has that kind of puffy, almost distressed look and feel without actually being distressed. Like it's not the same as say a Chanel reissue, but it does have a different texture to it. And I feel like when it comes to bags, you will often know pretty immediately if it's a bag that you have to baby, you know, I'm never really surprised by wear and tell on a bag because usually I can tell right from the first wear whether it's going to be a bag that's susceptible to damage. And sometimes bags surprise me, um, but the puffer, it instantly felt different. And it's just not a bag that you have to worry about genuinely. Like this one I've had for a bit less time than my black one, but the black leather still looks absolutely amazing. And I have used this one a fair amount and like there's literally just nothing wrong with it. I think where I'm gonna see the most wear is on the corners, um, which is what's happened with my black one. But even there, it's just not too bad. So definitely a very durable one. Um, despite the very plushy feel, it's actually very hard wearing and very, very carefree as a result. My Chanel 19 is next, and this one is obviously a lot newer than all my other styles, so I can't say anything about the wear and tear with too much authority. That said, similar to what I was saying with the puffer, I do feel like this bag isn't really gonna be one that I'm gonna stress too much about in terms of the wear and tear. My biggest concern was the structural issues, and that's pretty much immediately been solved with the bag shaper, so not something that concerns me at all now. Even with the heavy chain, it's just not a concern. And I would say that even though this bag is lambskin, when I compare it to my Chanel minis, which are also in lambskin, it's a very, very different feel. And I think that's to do with how tightly the quilts are pulled or kind of sewn together. So on the Chanel mini, it's a very smooth type of leather because they are stitched so tightly. So there's not really any give. And even though it's puffy, like it's just a very, very stretched out leather. Whereas here, it just feels like there's much more give. It is a lot puffier. So there is kind of more air there and it just feels like a slightly different texture. And as a result of that, I'm just not particularly concerned about nicks and marks and scratches. Whereas that's something that I'm very aware of on my Chanel minis. I do treat them accordingly, like very, very carefully. So even though it's not been too long, I've been wearing this, as I mentioned, very consistently over the past few weeks. It's been my most used bag and like there is literally nothing wrong with it. Um, I don't anticipate I'm going to have any major wear issues. If I do, I will certainly let you guys know. But for me, now that these structural issues are sorted, I just don't have too many concerns in terms of the general wear and tear. I think it's gonna do very, very well. Next up is my Valentino Roman stud bag. And I am ranking these. So this does kind of rank a little bit lower than the others. Uh, there's nothing kind 
kind of drastically wrong with it, but I have seen a few little kind of nicks here and there. Again, unlike the Chanel 19 bag, the quilts are pulled a little bit tighter. So I'd say this leather, even though it does have that larger quilted look, which does lend it the more puffy element, I'd say that this leather is actually a little bit more similar to the classic Saint Laurent Lulu in that it's a bit smoother, it's a bit tighter, and therefore it's a bit more susceptible to dents and nicks of that sort. Um, so I have one right here on the right flap. And then on the base, you can just see like, just little kind of stretches and marks and wrinkles and things like that. I am considering trying to find a shaper for this one as well because I do think it will benefit from it and just give me that peace of mind. Um, but that said, I've used this a fair amount and I have been aware of it, but I've not like super, super babied it and it's still done very well. So. I would say that it's not quite as carefree as say the Chanel 19, but I certainly haven't been, you know, so freaked out that it's put me off wearing it. I'm just mindful when I do wear it that I don't want to be completely mindless with the maintenance of it. And lastly, I have my classic Saint Laurent Lulu, um, and I don't want to kind of rank this last and say it's terrible for wear and tear, because it's not at all, and all of these bags are pretty good for wear and tear. It's part of the reason why they're some of my favourites, because I do find them to be very, very carefree. But if I was ranking them, I would say this is probably a bit more susceptible than the others, for the reasons that I mentioned before, in that it's a smoother leather, it's pulled a lot tighter, and because of that, you do see wrinkles, and I do think it's more susceptible to scratches and things like that whereas you know with the Chanel 19 I can kind of run my nails over it and I'm not worried about it scratching whereas this one I wouldn't really do that because again smoother leather it just feels a little bit more delicate nothing particularly wrong with my nude one which has definitely been my most used one recently my white one has got a little bit more wear and tear to it especially just in terms of like the wrinkles around the flap so nothing too crazy bad you know I wouldn't use this bag if I was you're going to a theme park or anything like that, um, but definitely doesn't put me off wearing it on a daily basis. I do think it's a lovely style and certainly not a bag I stress about, um, but I'd say because of the smoother leather, it does seem to be just a little bit more susceptible. And then finally, I thought I'd rank them in terms of best value, which ultimately kind of leads to my recommendations as well. Keep in mind, I love all of these bags a lot. As I mentioned, they're my favorite bags pretty much of my whole collection, my most used and reached for bags. So, you know, even last is still pretty high on my list in terms of bags I love. Um, so bear that in mind when it comes to my rankings, but in terms of best value and just best buy in general, there are clear winners for me. So in evaluating these styles, I'm also taking into account price as well, which is obviously a very, very important component, as well as how classic they are, how they wear, that sort of thing. Um, for me, kind of joint first is the Saint Laurent Lulu line. I love it. It's no secret that I love this line. I think it's fantastic. In terms of the most classic, and therefore I think the best value, it is the more kind of standard classic design. Even though it's probably worst in terms of wear and tear, it's still not particularly bad, you know, these are still very durable bags, so it was worst in a very competitive category, I'd say, and in terms of everything else from the pricing to the look to the functionality, versatility, I just think it's fantastic, and if you want a very classic style, which isn't going to cost you thousands and thousands of pounds, then this is definitely a great one to consider. If you did want something a little bit more edgy, and certainly if your style is a little bit more casual, then I do think that the puffer line is an equally good option. I don't think it's quite as classic as the regular one, but I don't think that there's vast amounts in it. The jury's still out in terms of the longevity of the puffer line, but again, the fact that it has been around so long is a good sign, and I just think it's a really fun, beautiful bag, which is just a pleasure to wear, and I don't think that that aspect can be too undervalued or underrated, because how nice it is to wear has a really big impact in terms of how often you reach for it, and also how popular it is as well. So I would definitely recommend it. If you're drawn to the puff line, I don't think you can go too wrong with this one. I just think it's wonderful. Next up is my Chanel Jumbo, and this one is kind of right in the middle because even though that I think it's the most classic and I love it in terms of 
well, everything functionalities look, it's also hideously expensive. And I felt like it was hideously expensive five years ago and obviously the price increases since then have just been ridiculous. Um, so it's up to you whether, you know, you love this bag so much that you think it's worth the money. Um, if you do think it's worth the money, then I don't think you can go wrong. As long as you're confident with this size, it is definitely a larger style. But if you're aware of that and you know you definitely like this size and the style, then I just think it's the ultimate. I absolutely love it. I still think that even despite the crazy prices, it is good value because they do just last forever and the wear and tear is a fantastic. And I just think it is the most stunning, lovely bag. And then coming in at number four is my Chanel 19, uh, which is a funny ranking, I know, but as I mentioned, I love all these bags, so it's really my ranking within my favorites. Um, this one is in at number four because it's very expensive, and I think it's a very untested style. And for me personally, I feel like Chanel should debut their styles at a much lower price point because, you know, it's one thing to spend £6,000, which is an insane amount of money, on a classic flat, which at least you know you can have it forever, whereas it's another to spend 4000 4500 on a bag where you don't know how long it's going to last. So I feel like Chanel should debut their bags at a lower price point, but I'm sure everyone thinks that except Chanel. Um, for me, I hope it lasts a really long time. It was certainly expensive enough that it should, um, but only time will tell. So I'm really ranking it just on how much I've been enjoying wearing it, how versatile I think it is. And if this kind of suits your vibe and your style, I think you'll love it. You know, I definitely say to try it on because I have heard from so many people that it's another love it or hate it style. For me, I was definitely in the love it camp and it's just been such a joy to you so far. And then finally, I have my Valentino Roman stud bag. Um, I feel bad that I'm kind of ranking this bag last in a lot of these categories, but um, the only reason this doesn't sit higher on my list is I think it's a bit expensive. Like I think it's a beautiful quality bag and I guess in crazy luxury bag world, maybe that justifies the price, but for certainly an untested style, much like the Chanel 19, I just feel like they should have priced it lower. And that said, you can often get these on a discount. So I bought mine at a 15% off discount and that is very, very easy to find. So I would say if you're considering this bag, definitely wait it out for a discount. 15% is definitely the minimum you should be looking at. Um, so with a discount, it's obviously considerably better. I saved, I think it was a bit over 300 pounds. Um, so that does bring it under the 2000 pound mark, which I think is a much more reasonable price point. Um, but coupled with the fact that I think it is priced quite highly, along with the fact that I think the longevity is still very, very TBC, this does rank a little bit lower because of that. That said, if you love the design, I don't think that there's anything wrong with the functionality. I always really enjoy using it because I feel like even with a very, very plain, boring outfit where I just couldn't be bothered to pick anything exciting, I can grab this bag. I feel like it just makes the whole look because it is such a statement. So that is why it's still one of my favorites. Um, it's just so beautiful. I love the look of it. I love to use it. And it's just one of those bags where if you do love the style, you will just absolutely fall in love with it if you own it. So mixed bag, I um, don't think it's necessarily worth full price, um, but I'm happy at the price that I paid in terms of the discount and I have really, really been enjoying it so far. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it, you found it useful. If you have any questions for me, then leave me a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, please do give this a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe. I post videos every single week. If you are looking for the comparison videos of my Chanel Classic Flaps or my Saint Laurent Lulu Puffers, then I do have both those videos. So I will link these here as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.